During the late 4th century BCE, Carthage fought against one of the most ruthless tyrants of the ancient era, a young man who went from following in his father's footsteps to laying claim to the whole island of Sicily and building a ruthless regime. Agophocles was born in Hymeria, and quickly followed in his father's footsteps of pottering. Seeing that he did not wish to have a similar life, he quickly joined the army, where he later married the widow of his wealthy and distinguished patron, Damas. With this power and wealth, Agophocles quickly led two failed rebellions against the Syracusian oligarchy, both of which ended in his banishment from Syracuse. They say third time's the charm, and just like before, Agophocles returned to Syracuse with an army of mercenaries in 317 BCE. Although swearing to be marching in peace, his protests quickly turned into a revolution, massacring the Syracuse leadership and wealthier citizens, quickly proclaiming himself as Master of Syracuse. With power now under his control, Agophocles quickly turned towards creating a mighty army and navy as preparations for a future conquest. With his newfound armies, he quickly began to expand his control and influence across Sicily via military occupation. Despite these conquests, there was still something more precious out there. Carthage. With Carthage holding parts of western Sicily, Agophocles saw his justification for war, and, with a few years to prepare, the war was declared in 311 BCE. However, Agophocles quickly saw himself defeated at the Battle of the Hymera River, and so went his control of Sicily, quickly finding himself besieged in his capital of Syracuse. Surrounded by foreign forces and plagued by low public support, Agophocles finally tried to break the siege and change the theatre of war from his native Sicily to northern Africa. With his boats loaded with men, Agophocles tried to get the support of Ophelus, ruler of Cyrenica. In order to get this, he offered Cyrenica all the gains they would take in North Africa together with Syracuse reserving itself to gains in Sicily. This swung Ophelus to his side, and he quickly gathered a powerful army. Without taking into consideration the harsh climate of the Libyan desert, he marked his troops through the vast plains of the desert and reached Carthaginian territory after two difficult months of travel. He was at last greeted by Agophocles with every demonstration of friendship. With the two armies set up next to one another, Agophocles' ruthless nature led him to ambushing Ophelus' camp, killing him and absorbing his troops within his own army. This saw some initial success. However, in 307 BCE, he was utterly defeated and fled to Sicily where he made peace with Carthage in 306 BCE. The peace treaty left him in control of all of Sicily, east of the Hylacus River, and he styled himself as King of Sicily in 304 establishing his rule over its Greek cities more firmly than ever. He ruled until his death in 289 BCE, and it is said that by this time he was still contemplating a fresh attack on Carthage. Agophocles the Sicilian became king of Syracuse not only from a private, but from a low and abject position. This man, the son of a potter, through all the changes in his fortunes, always led an infamous life. Nevertheless, he accompanied his infamies with so much ability of mind and body that having devoted himself to the military profession, he rose through its ranks to be Praetor of Syracuse. Thanks for watching. If you want more great historical videos, be sure to like and subscribe.